You wouldn't think I was 57, would you? <laughs> I'm only 56. today and asked about my sex life. You're what, Arthur? They're doing a survey connected with some product or other. The product she wasn't at liberty to reveal. It's to do with sex and the elderly. And did I wear false teeth? Huh. How old? I said over 60, she wouldn't say. Under 60? That would defeat the object of the survey, she said. What is the object of the survey? I asked. Oh, I can't reveal that, she said. Do I get paid? No. Then can I go? Not until you've completed the questionnaire. Who's going to stop me? No one. Thank you. Then why do you say I can't go till I've completed the questionnaire? Why should I reveal to you the intimate moments of my life in this street, in this weather? Is it to make someone else richer and me poorer? And did you tell her about your sex life? Oh, yeah, you know, I, I gave way in the end. And what sort of questions did she ask? Did I think permissiveness was a good idea? Type of deodorant of any size of family? Did I prefer single beds or double beds? That sort of question. Nothing you'll make any sense of. I wanted to ask her about her sex life. Was she fulfilled? Was she happy? Was she permissive? And if it's about sex on the elderly, why ask me? Do I look that old? To me, you do, she said. Oh, I followed her down the street asking her these questions. In the end, she hopped on a bus, put her tongue out at me and made an obscene gesture in my direction. What sort of gesture? Evening. Over. Good evening. Arthur, I've called by your place earlier. I thought I'd pop in. You weren't there. Oh, well, I must have been out shopping. That's what Gwen said. Yeah, you're, you're welcome any time. That's what Gwen said. Do you know, I was stopped in the street today and asked about my sex life. Your what? My sex life. Who? <laughs> oh, some young girl. Nose stuck right up in the air. What for? We do a survey. What sort of survey? Huh? She wouldn't say market research or something. There wasn't a bloke there with a camera, was it? Camera? Yeah, a film camera. No. You sure? No, there was no camera. Did you have a thing on the net? Thing? Yeah. What sort of thing? A microphone. It's as slim as a pencil. Looks like an ornament. No. There wasn't a van about, was there? Hmm? A camera in the van. You can't see. They shoot the whole scene through one-way glass. What are you on about, Harry? Well, the fellow I used to know once, an old age pensioner. They stopped him in the street once. They wanted to know what he thought about sex, too, and uh, uh, what do you think about the miniskirts, and what do you think about the braless bra, and uh, what do you think about the see-through thing, you know, the blouse, and did he think that uh, topless waitresses was a good idea, and uh, would he like to have his time all over again? And then they gave him half a knicker. Go and have a drink, Granddad. Oh, oh, thank you. A film. What, what sort of film? To show on the telly. Oh, what for? A human interest item. To give her that, he make us laugh. Even found myself laughing at it when I saw it, and I don't laugh much. And then, a week after they showed the film, the poor old bugger died. <laughs> well, that could have killed him. Oh, no, no, he'd, uh, anyway, wouldn't he? But what I mean to say is, well, they got their laugh out, the poor old bugger, before he went, no, didn't they? There was no camera, and I didn't get any money. Oh, no, they got you on the cheap, mate. <laughs> hey? You watch that telly, you'll be on it yet, mate. No, I've seen that. What? Well, the fellow that plays the party old age pensioner. They speed up the film and he runs backwards and then he runs forwards. You know him, what's, what's his name? What's his name, who? No, the fellow who plays the part of the old age pensioner. Uh, he's, what's he? he plays all the parts in the show. You know him. 
What's his name? Well, Kip was this old age pensioner. I knew him. I took back him old now. So I went to his bloody funeral. <laughs> there was no camera. What was they researching? I don't know. There you are. It's on the telly. You'll be on that screen one day, mate, and you'll come out a complete idiot. Yeah. I can hear the laughter now. They took one look at you and they thought, look at this one here. We'll get a giggle out of this one here, they thought. <laughs> sex. Big joke. Me? Sex. Oh. What's wrong with sex? What's right with it? There's nothing wrong with sex. Oh, you now that, wouldn't you, you? Bloody <laughs> sex. They're chucking at you from everywhere now, aren't they? I can remember a time when they used to paint out the nipples in the papers, didn't they? And look at them now. They're everywhere. That's well, all right. Yeah, it's all right. It's place. Yeah. Where is its place, then? Well, I'm having my breakfast. What's the point of getting out of steam up on the train on the way to work? Well, that's not what it's all about, though, is it? Well, what is it all about? What's it all about? What's it all about is what it's all about. Well, you want to try raising that subject in my household. With my wife, or the woman who claims to be my wife, who never stops reminding me that she's my wife. Where's the proof, I ask her? You try raising the subject, dear. What about your sex life, I ask her, while we're being so amused about it? How, she says. What about it? Well, I haven't seen much sign of life out of you lately, I say. How, she says. Well, I have my thoughts. And what are your thoughts, I ask her? How, she says. Not content with knowing everything else about me, and continually demanding proof that we're married, and that we've been married for the past 25 years, you also want to know my thoughts. What are you on about, Harry? Well, I keep my thoughts to myself, I told her. Very much to myself. How, she says. And I keep my thoughts very, very much to myself, she says. And I keep my thoughts very, very much indeed to myself, I told her. How, she says, indeed you do. And that's where they ought to be kept. Because I've had a glimpse of your thoughts over the past few years, she says. And that's where they ought to be kept. And I have had a glimpse or two of your thoughts over the past few years, I said. Oh, yes, indeed. What are you on about, Harry? Nothing. <laughs> 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 Big bang, eh? Big what? Big bang. Not the revolution anymore, Harry. No, of course. The big bang will do. <laughs> what are you drinking? Well, I'm the same. Yeah, same thing, Harry. What's he drinking? Uh, bitter. Half. Oh. <laughs> he doesn't mellow with the years, does he? Yourself. Talk to yourself as usual. <laughs> you awake? Asleep as usual. Oh, two hours, six cigarettes. Almost time to get up. Tick tock, tick tock. Isn't it time to get up? In a little while. Are you asleep? Yeah. Well, go back to sleep. No, when I'm awake, I'm awake. Did I wake you? Were you talking? Yes. No, you didn't wake me. My mind is always very alert at this time of the day. Yes, I know it is. I feel I need less and less sleep. And I need more and more. I know you do. I'd like to sleep more and more, but I sleep less and less. Well, you shouldn't go to sleep early in the evening. <laughs> Did you know that Tom wears a wig? <laughs> Tom, he wears a wig. Oh, you are bright. Uh, a room full of smoke as usual. I was saying that Tom wears a wig. A wig? Mm. Tom? Well, I've never seen Tom with a wig. He used to have a full head of hair once. Yes, he did. I meant to tell you about it yesterday evening. But I fell asleep as usual. He only wears it indoors. What they call a hair piece, actually. I had to call on him the other day. He opened the door wearing sunglasses and a wig. When he saw it was me, he denied he was himself, said he would go and fetch himself. He went away, 
came back without the glasses and the wig. When I asked who had opened the door, he said it was a friend. May I come in? I said, no, you may not, he said. <laughs> I didn't know he was vain about his hair. He's not vain about his teeth. Hasn't said it, is he? No. He hasn't done anything. No. Why did you go around? I borrowed a pound. Wanted to pay it back. Oh, there's the paper. Tick tock. Oh, I do wish you'd stop saying tick tock every time anything happens. I like saying tick tock. It's the internal clock. Tick tock. Not now. It's the body dictating its needs, waking me up for its first cigarette. Do you know, I sometimes think the day will come when I shall have to spend the entire night smoking. Look, are you getting up? The paper has come, that's what I mean. Tick tock. Yesterday's news as usual. Ah, a big question mark hangs over your day. What's mine? That was yours. Oh, what's yours? <laughs> Good luck in the affairs of the health. Pub. This isn't a pub. 
Have you seen the other bars? No, we, we've only just arrived. The Sleepy Lagoon Bar, the Crow's Nest Bar. Uh, I think I'll go and hang myself in the Pig and the Pope Bar. This isn't the pub we used to go to. Yes, it is, but it wasn't like this then. We never went under a dual carriageway, under a subway. It was a high street then. It was a pub in Marylebone. It was here. But I've never been here before. It's Friday night and we should have gone to the club. Was it because of Tom? What? That we're here. Tom will be at the club. A sentimental journey. What did Tom set you remembering? Wanted to come back? Well, no, I thought it would be a change. I mean, we do go to the club every Friday. Well, it's the end of the week, and I look forward to it. Year in, year out. Perhaps you used to come here with Tom. Cinema across the road, the Blue Hall Cinema. We used to go and see a picture, and then we'd go across the road to the pub opposite the cinema. That was when we went to the pub after we'd been to the pictures. This isn't the pub opposite the cinema. But there isn't a cinema opposite this pub. Of course there isn't. It's a supermarket. There was a small orchestra. There were palm trees and there was a fountain. Well, I remember dancing being allowed. It was a very popular place, famous for its fountain. Well, that's where we were tonight. Marylebone? No, not there. It was going there. Made me remember that pub in Marylebone. Tom used to take me to a pub in Marylebone. Perhaps we all three went. But there was no fountain. I wonder if they've ruined that pub too. That pub in Marylebone. Look, try not to lie on your back. I'll try not. Lie on your side. I'll try to. And then you won't cough so much. I'll try. And don't smoke. I need to. So much. <coughs> it's quiet. Yes. Huh. Very quiet. really goes on in there. What? I wonder what goes on in there. Where? Arthur and Gwen, their place. What goes on in there? Nothing. What goes on in here? That's a question you ought to be asking. Double blood is zero. I'm not talking about here. I'm talking about there. What are you trying to say? Tom. What about Tom? He goes in there and has a bath every Thursday night now. Perhaps he hasn't got a bath in his place. Well, there's the public bath. Perhaps he doesn't like the public baths. There's a picture of them all together when they were young. When they were young? Tom hasn't been in the district all that long. That's what I thought. It's by their bed. How do you know it was Tom? It looked like him. Oh, it can't look like him. It looks now, can it? Well, of course it does look like it looks now. But it was him. The same nose, same mouth, everything. Only younger. It's by their bed. What? The picture. Hi! Uh, how do you know what's by their bed? I've seen it. When? Gwen was ill once. Gwen ill? Oh. When was Gwen ill? In the winter. Yes! Bless you. It's by their bed. And there's also a picture of Arnold. Arnold? Gwen's boy. Oh, yes. The one that looked like a tailor's dummy. Went to Baltimore. I thought he looked a bit like Tom. Sniff, sniff. Oh. Sniff, don't sniff. Start I didn't sniff, marry sniff, a human please. being, did I? I oh, made a bloody bloodhound. Sniff, funny. sniff. Look at this. 
Thrill magazine. Love him. Husband returns to claim child bride. Filling up your mind with all this muck. Now, when are you going round to bed? It's a true human interest story. Uh, have you woken me up just to talk about <laughs> Arthur and Tom? Well, they're your friends. Oh, no, they're not. I haven't got any friends. They don't want any other. Listen, I go up to the pub and I sit where I sit. Five minutes after I got there, I got Arthur on one side and Tom on the other. There's Arthur perched inside one ear and Tom perched inside the other one. They weren't at the club tonight. Who? Oh. Arthur and Gwen. So? Tom was there. So? Arthur and Gwen, they never missed. Oh, so what? Friday night's ladies' night. I know it bloody is. So, all right, Friday night is ladies' night. Friday night again now. Friday night's the only night of the week when I get a good night's sleep. So, all right, it's ladies' night. I like a good drink. Helps me to unwind after all that convening all the week. Sorting out this bloke's grouse and that bloke's grouse. See if I really care. It's all right, it's ladies' night. And I'll finish on the night on shorts, don't I? So I can get at least one good night's sleep to blot out the sign of that pile driving going on night and day. You can hardly hear it. Well, it's because you're half deaf, isn't it? You can't hear it, but I can. Uh, I've already paid good money for this night's sleep. Now, I can see I'm not going to get it. Before you know where you are, it's bloody Monday morning again, isn't it? And for what? I want you to be taxed out of existence by them bloody thieves up there. So all right, negotiate, negotiate. Months of bloody negotiation. Strike, everybody out, everybody out. They might just as well give you what you want in the first place, because you always get it in the end. So who's the main beneficiary then? Them up there, them up more tax for them up there. Look at me. I'm back at work. I'm back at work, right here, right here, I'm back at work. Hmm. <coughs> oh, I got that hammer in the back of my head again. Go and see a doctor. Doctor, doctor. Would you call me a for man a couple of days off? Haven't you got a hammering in your head? It's an headache. It's caused by noise. Lack of sleep, general frustration. Seems to me to be becoming more and more a grey quality in my life. It's the drink. It's not a drink. What's wrong with a nice it's long right, drink? As long as you don't make a pig of yourself. about. Why do you always eat chocolates in bed? I like to go to sleep with a sweet taste in my mouth. Look at me. I'm up now. Look, eight hours before I ought to be up, I'm up. What am I going to do for the next eight hours? Tell me, what am I going to do? Read a book. I don't like books. Seventeen million vehicles a year up and down that road. We will go in! It's got to be twenty-two million vehicles a year by 1973. So they say. Official estimate. If they know. If they know, it's not going to be thirty million vehicles a year by then. I'd like to know where those planners live, I would. Some rural paradise. Some will never be touched. Fight to work. Uh, to fight back. It's getting worse. And for what? Caught a bloke with my car the other day. <laughs> right down the side of his car. 
I've got the soft skin of his car right down the side. I noticed the dent in the mud guard. Yeah, well, it cost him, it won't cost me. He'd been cutting me up. So I went for him. <laughs> Big, fat bloke he was. <laughs> and then... I went and reported him for dangerous driving. <laughs> he swerved onto me, I said. <laughs> oh, they was ever so pleased. I came out of there feeling like a good citizen should. Big bloody bang. Oh, not the big bang. Big bloody. What's happening on the country music scene? Well, to find out, tune into Radios 1 and 2 tonight at 7-2. Murray Cash is the man with all the news. Pat Campbell is your host, and the music this week comes from Jack... ...style. You'll have to get in the wardrobe. Can't I get under the bed? <laughs> it's a low slung bed, honey. I'm suffering. 
Meditate in the wardrobe, Gwen. Oh, quick. All right. But if it's going to be all night, I'm going to get hungry, honey. Could you bring me some sandwiches? I'm trying. Now, quick. And a flask of coffee. And get me a flashlight. And a book. Oh. Oh. Hi, Tom. Oh, hi, honey. <laughs> Get the wagon and we'll take him in. How are you feeling, Walt? That sure was a fight you put up up there on that hill. Marshal, he's got a gun. Now you put that gun away, Walt, because we're going to take you back and we're going to hang you. Look out, Marshal. Hey, Marshal, he didn't have no bullets in the chamber. He went the way he wanted to go. He sure don't look 80 years old. You're looking at a face that's 
pure evil, Sheriff. Still, it would have made a beautiful hanging, Marshal. All the bunting and the gals and the whiskey. Uh -huh. Reckon we can still have the gals and whiskey, Sheriff. God dang it, Sheriff. We gonna have the bunting, too. <laughs> yes, sir. Typical autumn day. I thought they did it very nicely, didn't you? What? The service. Well, it was quick. I'll say that for it. Fastest thing I've ever seen. That earth was touching 40 miles an hour at one point. We nearly lost it once. On the way out. There's a queue of verses in the street outside. What about that? I bet they got their timings wrong. You were in the chapel. Was the chapel, wasn't it? Where they had that sing song bloke? Hmm? Well, that was quick in and out, wasn't it? They've modernised the service, that's all. They don't go into the incinerator straight away. You know? Now to wait until they got three. They do them in batches of three or four. No, we My grandfather died. We followed the hearse on foot all the way to the church. Took the whole afternoon. <laughs> the production line this was, wasn't it? Have you known Arthur and Gwen long, Tom? Yes. I didn't know if you had. I knew them a long time ago. Really? I didn't know that. Yes. I expect you were away a long time. It was a long time. When I go, I want it to be on foot. Everybody on foot, all the way. That'll cost you. <laughs> Won't cost me. Who's going to pay for it then? Me? You might go first. You're going on foot for me then? Shut up, me. You've known them before then? Yes. No one ever said. No one ever says anything. Why should they? I knew them years ago. Then I went away. Then I came back and I looked them up. I have a great fondness for the past, for the way things were. Where'd you go? Australia. I didn't like that. New Zealand. I didn't like that. Canada. I didn't like that either. Then I came back, I got a job down on the south coast. Liked that. Then I went up north. I didn't like that either. Well, you certainly like to travel. Do you like it here? It's where my memories are. Hmm. I'll just go inside and see if I can help. I missed my bloody chance. Say? Say? I missed my bloody chance. I had a chance once of becoming a mercenary. Yeah, my old captain, he turned mercenary. He was a bloody good bloke. And he wanted me to go with him. He was going to give me rank. Lieutenant. <laughs> and I missed that chance. I turned it down. I had a different sort of lust going for me then, didn't I? Came out and got married instead. Yeah. It was Arabs then, 20 quid a brace. Well, I mean, six brace a night. I mean, that's money, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I'd have had my own unit. Freedom. Everything. And I turned it down. Uh, not my bloody world anymore, I'll tell you, mate. My time is running out. My world at all. It could have been. 
If only I'd turn mercenary. I mean, you think I could have hung on to it for a bit longer, couldn't I? I mean, I, I, just a bit longer. My world. I mean, the world that I want. The mercenaries. Still going on, you know. Still going on. But even that will change. I mean, the world will be so well organised soon, they won't even need mercenaries. Why do you think I want to hear about your life story? I've heard millions of life stories in my time, all of them abject. A million tales of woe. You know what I'd like? I would like to be sitting in a bar sometime, have somebody come up to me and tell me my life story, not their life story, my life story. I'd really like that the way I would have written it, the way it should have been. But I don't want to hear about your life. But I don't want to hear your life story. No, no I don't want to hear your life story neither. Um, I think that's the most abject thing I ever heard. What is? W what you just said. Oh, are you throwing it away? Here. Oh. What, what you just said now. Yeah, it, it only gets one channel. No use for anybody. Yes, you'd like it. No, I don't want it. <laughs> oh. I've got one of my own, I don't want this one. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I expect to be taking a bit more of your garden soon. Widening that carriageway. Three lanes into four. Hmm? <laughs> Those planners and the rule of paradise, I bet they're chopping bits off your garden right now. How much did it take last time? Thirty foot. <laughs> You'll have the cars going right through the kitchen. <laughs> Be able to serve teas during the rush hour. <laughs> Yes, I can remember once this was a very nice place to live. I thought they did it very nicely. I thought it a bit rushed. I thought they might not have done it quite so quickly. I thought they might have taken a little while longer. It was a bit rushed, but apart from that... Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> My dad was a good man. How old was he? Eighty. He's out of it now. Well, what I say is this. We've all got to go sometime. And when you've gone, you've gone. Harry, we've only just buried him. We didn't bury him. What, what, what have I said? It sounded offensive. Well, if, if you think that's what sounding offensive is like, you'd better look up the meaning of the word again. No, no, Harry's right. He is better off out of it. He had to be nursed all the time. He had to have everything done for him just like a child. Half the time he didn't know when somebody went into the room. Well, he, he might have liked another day. I'm not saying he wouldn't have liked another <laughs> day. It, none of us just one enough. day. He was a good man. But he wasn't the man he was. No, I'm, I'm not saying he was. Oh, no one's saying that. Are they, Harry? What? Nothing.
all right about that, honey. What? That my life story. I don't know anything no. about your life. turned out all right for you, ain't I've never said it had. There's nothing abject about me. I never said there was. It was abject out there, wasn't it? Why do you think I want to know about what you hope for yourself? Is it something special about you? Is nothing. It? Look, I'm warning you. Don't you never come out with a mouthful like that again. I've done nothing with my life. What have you done with your life? I don't even know what it is that you do. Why should you? Or who you are? Nobody in particular. No. Too bloody. True. <laughs> today. Arthur! Arthur! Oh, that? The birthday card arrived today. Would you please take week it early. off? <laughs> a week early. It's always early. I thought it looked kind of cute. I wore it all the way home on the train and no one looked. I think everyone thought it was my real nose. <laughs> Who was here today? You tell me who was here today, and I'll take off his nose. <laughs> Tom. Tom? Is well, it's still this is a long running serial, honey. Well, it's postmark Baltimore, but there's no address. There never is. It's bound to turn up someday. Don't remind me. It was a great disappointment to us, of course. Arnold growing up in your image. I'd hoped he'd grow up in my image. But he was the image of you. He even walked in the way you walked. Must have come as a shock to him. This didn't show itself till he was almost 17. Until he was 17, it didn't resemble anybody at all. He was completely nondescript. And that too was a disappointment. It is a great disappointment when one's progeny turns out to be completely nondescript. And then almost overnight, just before his 18th birthday, he began to look more and more like you. His nose started to grow in the shape of your nose. Well, that doesn't really mean anything. What? That he began to look more and more like me. To me, it did. But at the age of 22, he looked exactly like you. It's a very alarming situation to have someone of 22 around the house looking exactly as you did 22 years before. And myself, 22 years older, Looking much as I do now. You look fine, Arthur. Look as he used to look. Almost. I've aged. <laughs> and you've aged. You're as young as you feel. Oh, you know, there are days when I feel incredibly old. <coughs> they only came the once. Yes. Just a, a flying visit at his wife's instigation. Was there nothing of Gwen in him? Just a trace. Around the eyes. But when he came back from Baltimore, he didn't look like anything at all. Looked as if he was made of plastic. It's the food they eat. <sighs> Did he, uh, ever find out about me? Oh, yes. He had to in the end. And there we have the situation. Doubt here and doubt in Baltimore. Arnold seemed to think he looked slightly more like me than he did before he went. I don't know how convinced he really was. You wanted him to look like you. Well, I... I raised him all those years. Naturally, one would have liked an image in one's own likeness and not in the likeness of someone else. You seem pleased. Well, naturally, I'm pleased. But not at the risk of offending you. Where does that leave me? Leaves you in a very isolated position. Exactly. Still, it's possible that somebody sired by you could turn out to look just like me. And it's possible that someone sired by me could turn out to look just like you. Well, that would make the situation even more intolerable. Could be a comfort. Not for me and, and not for Gwen. Nor me. <laughs> <coughs> I've, uh, I've never asked, but why did you come back? Memories. I also wanted to have a look at the child. He's not a child. Well, I didn't know what it would turn out to be. A boy or a girl. I'm glad it was a boy. 
<laughs> In the end, Gwen did finally manage to convince herself that he belonged to both of us, that he was ours, until you arrived. She recognised you at once, and she recognised you because she saw something of Arnold in you. And now, ugh, she's more confused than ever. It's put her back. You know the way you scratch the side of your nose? Do I? Hmm. It's something you do when you're particularly pleased with yourself. Well, Arnold does that. Well, you could have picked that up from anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but not the smile that goes with it. Will he ever return? No. I think we've seen the last of him. Or to put it more precisely, I think he's seen the last of us. The atmosphere at the airport was distinctly cool. Arnold gave me one long, cool look. And his wife gave Gwen one long, cool look. And they turned and went to the plane. And in that look, we both saw everything. All that needed to be said. It was the sort of look that said, this is the last time we shall see you, but we shall continue sending the Christmas cards. You got all that from one look? It was a very long look. I would like to see seen well, you could go up to Baltimore. <laughs> My days for travelling are over. <laughs> so we're still no clearer? No. The doubt looms larger. So it could be that he was mine? Yes. And it could be that he was yours? Yes. I would like it to have been clear. One way or another. It can't be. It never will be. No. Tom and Gwen are having an affair. Having a what? Tom and Gwen. I think they're having an affair. Sniff, sniff. Oh. I've seen the signs. What signs? Oh, the signs. I didn't put a finger on, just a feeling. Well, that rubbish you read. Rubbish? Yeah, rubbish. All this stuff you watch. Well, you watch it too. Yeah, but I don't take it in. I push it back. Well, I still think they're having an affair, and I think Arthur knows. You must be mad. What, Gwen, at her time of life? Why not? And who would fancy Tom? I might still have something about him. Oh, Marty. you noticed something in him, have you? I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about Gwen. An ugly, abject bloke like that. He's not ugly. Oh, isn't he? Some women like ugly men. Oh, do they? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. I'm not <laughs> talking about you. I'm talking about Tom. How come you know about the ugly man, then? Well, you often see women going arm in arm with ugly men. You often see some men walking down the street arm in arm with some bloody ugly women, too, don't you? I'm talking about Tom and Gwen. Oh, shut up, Maze. Let's watch this. Anyway, who'd fancy Gwen? And who fancy Tom? Tom might fancy Gwen. And Gwen might fancy Tom. Does Arthur know you're here? No. Why did you come? I was curious. It's a very small room. Rooms are hard to get around here. Flats are extremely expensive. It was always my intention in life to end up extremely rich. Yeah, I know. I failed. When I come back, when I looked you up, I didn't know whether you'd be alive or dead or even living in a different part of the country. There you were. Arthur was never a very ambitious man. I was sorry the old man died. 
He never mentioned you. Ever. After you went. Well, no, 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 leave it. Leave it, it looks all right, it looks nice. It looks like you used to look. You were always vain, Tom. Vain? Yeah, well, that's what I liked about you. You were so vain. <laughs> we often take a stroll through the park. It was Arthur pointed out your room to me. So I thought I'd take a chance and come up. I have been before. Well, not in the room, but in the door. But you weren't in. Arthur was talking about Arnold. He doesn't usually mention him now. It was I who brought the question up. He ended up looking very like you, Tom. So Arthur's saying. On some days. On other days, he looked very like Arthur. I never knew which likeness was going to come into the room. Yours or Arthur's. No. I don't think we shall see him again. There seems something very final in his last goodbye. Do you mind? No. Not now. Arnold's gone. I mind about the grandchildren, of course. His wife seemed to see a likeness to Arthur in one of the children. We had a long talk about it when she was over here. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Yes. <laughs> it hasn't faded. I have it really photographed every uh, two or three years. You, me, Arthur. I remembered you. All the years. Hardly a day went by when we didn't talk about you. Never really out of my mind. Hard thing for me to say. Yes, it would be. I suppose I am vain. <laughs> <laughs> we danced the foxtrot again. Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember? We came second in the foxtrot competition. There was a lot of people thought we'd come first. <laughs> I've kept my medal. <laughs> <laughs> and then I lost it. Yes. <laughs> I should never have gone. But you did. I thought you were leaning towards him. Yeah, well, I was for a while. So I pushed you. Yes, you did. And I've been pushed, I was left with the consequences. We all were. Yes. Yes. Baltimore is the number one murder city in the USA. I always thought it was Chicago. No, according to Arnold, it's Baltimore. Perhaps he was boasting. He's got four guns. One he keeps by his bed, one down the side of the sofa, one on the fridge behind the kitchen door, and the one in the car has got dum-dum bullets and a hair trigger. His wife carries a gun in her purse. She showed me a photograph of it when they were over. It's a lady's gun. And there's a mother of pearl handle. What's her name? Mary. Is she pretty? She's got a pinched mouth. Did you see any photographs of the grandchildren? Oh, yes. We had an evening of colour slides. He sees himself as something of a photographer. Did he leave any pictures behind? No, he took them all back with him. Mmm. These cakes are nice. They are. It's been a happy day. Mm -hmm. I always think it's nice to stop for tea. It creates a pause. I like to pause from time to time.
were you comfortable in the car? Perfectly. If you hadn't hidden in the wardrobe, we wouldn't all be sitting here now. <laughs> there was nowhere else to hide. Not a window. And a 20-foot drop. Arnold might still be with us. If you hadn't opened the wardrobe, we wouldn't be sitting here now. Well, I tried to stop him. I want a dressing gown. When one goes on a fishing trip, it is not always wise to return prematurely. I never have since. I still have the scene etched on my mind. You, crouching down in the wardrobe, naked, in the half dark. And I've still got the scene etched on my mind. In the dark, door opening, blinded by the light, you towering above me naked. <laughs> it was a very primitive sight, and also a great shock. And there was Gwen's face beyond with her mouth open. From my position, from where I was, sitting up in bed, John Dreer. <laughs> and seeing Arthur's face through Tom's legs, <laughs> looking up, crouched on the floor of the wardrobe. <laughs> I thought you were going to hit him. You were almost stronger than Arthur. If I'd been clothed, I might. But I'd turn. Arthur got out, gathered up his clothes and went. No, you left the room. Arthur stayed and dressed. That's right. You left the room, I got dressed, and then I went. I remember you gave me a thumbs-up sign, and I thought it was a bit tactless at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, after all, you were getting away. I still had to cope with what was to come. And I passed you in the hall. You were standing in the hall with your face to the wall. <laughs> As I recall it, you left the room. I stayed my ground. Well... <laughs> It was all so long ago. <laughs> and along came Arnold, nine months later, in no one's likeness. Um, not then. I remember. The first hint of the pregnancy. And away I went. And I stood by her. But you didn't want to. I sometimes think that, but I didn't want to. I always knew. And then the feeling went. Yes, we raised Arnold and then Arnold went. And now you're back. I took your name for Arnold. I was you in the house, and myself outside it. It was confusing, but we thought it was the most sensible arrangement, and it worked for years, until Arnold discovered. Arnold wanted to see some papers and discovered that I was myself, and not you. A lifetime, and twice round the world. One seems to be left with very little at the end of it. is left with nothing at all. It's not good for him to be on his own. He seems to be showing signs of neglect. Well, there was never any good at looking after himself. Oh, we have room here. The old man's gone. Would you mind? The old battles are over, if there were any to begin with. 
And it's quiet here. Yeah. Except for the noise of the traffic. Oh, I hardly hear it now. Would you like him here? After all, he still is your husband. Mm. Would you like me to fetch him? Would you want to come? Well, that can only be discovered by the asking. <laughs> oh. Oh. Would you like me to fetch him? Yes. a new dimension to things. <laughs> we might be able to go on forever now. <laughs> a fresh start. A new beginning. <laughs> oh, I'm so sleepy. Night, Tom. Night, Gwen. <laughs> night, Arthur. Good night, Tom. Mm. Night, Gwen. Night, honey. <laughs> and night, Tom. Good night, Gwen. Good night, Tom. Good night, Arthur. Nighty night. Good night, Tom. Well, good night, Tom. Good night, Arthur. Sleep tight, Tom. Hi, Tom. Oh, Arthur. Good night. You're looking tired. Oh, boy. 